Welcome back to the Holiness Podcast. My name is Leanne Alexander. I'm so excited to have with me today my friend Everett Gossard. And as you know, in this podcast, we are talking about this idea of wholeness, holiness. Our tagline really says it all. We believe discipleship is the process and holiness is the result. In other words, as we grow closer to God, of course, that shapes every part of our life. And so today, I'm so thankful Brother Gossard is here to take part in this conversation. And so I know him as my colleague. We work together at Pentecostal Resources Group, and he does a tremendous job editing the books and as book editor. He is every year getting into books on all kinds of subjects, Bibles, all kinds of projects. Of all the wonderful things I could say about you, I think the thing that is most pertinent to this discussion is you are a fellow disciple. So thank you for being part today. A conversation about discipleship, about wholeness, about holiness. We've covered a lot of ground so far in this season. And I wanted to have a conversation with you for many reasons. And one of which is, I know you've done some work on holiness. You've also done some work on worship. And with, with some of your study on worship, I think that probably factors into this ongoing conversation I've been having. When I talk about holiness being the fruit of walking with God and our discipleship. Sometimes I think when I've been talking with maybe a new Christian, I've said when they maybe asked a question about a certain practice, a certain uh, spiritual discipline, a certain practice, a certain life choice I've made. Sometimes I'm, I've said, well, I'm doing this as an act of worship unto God. And I think I know what I mean by that, but I thought today would be a good day to just reevaluate um, in this big, really broad conversation that we're having about discipleship and holiness, where does worship fit into that? And so probably what we ought to do first is, is maybe let's get your definition of worship based on some of the studies you've done. It's a big question. I think about worship and in some respects, I don't know where to start. Yeah. As an apostolic, as a oneness apostolic, as someone who came into the oneness apostolic faith in his mid-20s mm -hmm. with a myriad background of attending, not with any real regularity, of some other denominations, um, you know, their, different, their definition of worship and our definition of worship is probably radically different. Sure. As oneness apostolics, I think that we... We define worship in a certain way. You could ask, I was thinking 10, but you could probably even ask 100 apostolics. What is worship? And many of them would give very much the same answer. I think that you have singing, you have raising your hands, um, shouting, um, some people will run, they'll take a lap around the church. Yeah. And that, that is an act of worship. Um, I don't see holy rolling all that often anymore, but my pastor does the occasional holy roll right across the, right across the platform. So as acts of worship um, and dancing. Am I, am I missing anything for That's a classic a definition of worship? In a church service setting, I, I, think, I think those are a lot of the big ones, yeah. I don't think of, I don't think of brushing my teeth mm -hmm. as an act of worship. Uh, there was an author, I, I don't remember the author um, or the book um, some time ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago, a book that all of life is worship. Mm -hmm. And it was this theology, if you will, that took hold. And sure. some people took hold of this and said, this is really, I believe all of life is worship. Now, when I'm brushing my teeth, I would be, I would be really hard pressed to see that as an act of worship. That just sure. for me, it, I always had a hard time with this phrase, all of life is worship, because uh, I view, I, I like the philosophy in general, that we live our lives and that all of our life, we want to worship God in what we do. Mm -hmm. And so that every act that we do, 
every action that we take, every word that we say, everything that we watch, everything that we listen to, we should do so out of an act of worship. That's a really good point. And I think that's a helpful balance. Um, a, a few things there you, you mentioned, I want to zero in on. I said in a previous episode, oh goodness, sometime back that, you know, all of life is discipleship and discipleship is not all alive. Or maybe I even said it like, you know, discipleship is everything and everything is discipleship. And so, you know, as a fellow wordsmith, we, we look for these clever ways that we can pull words together to just succinctly convey a concept. And, and I know what we're doing there, but there is, is a danger there in oversimplification. And this fallacy we can bump into when we try to get these perfect little sound bites, these Twitter-friendly definitions. Um, but I think what you've just done is really helped because even when with what I was trying to say with discipleship, which is, I think, a similar, a similar concept, I want in every area of my life to be thinking about how does this bring me closer to God? But I, I think there is a real reality check there with the scope of what we're discussing. So when I go to the dermatologist, I'd, I'd like to think that in that interaction, there's something that happens that reflects my Christianity, my, my relationship with God. But that that is a very different event than when I'm having my daily prayer time. So I, I get your point that it, it's easy to get out of balance when we start into these, you know, all compassing statements. All of life is worship. Well, what does that mean? So thank you for that. That's helpful. Now you referenced church services and some of the, the things that may happen in a church service during that time of worship. Um, Maybe then talk to us about beyond the church service. What does worship look like? And, and if you want to kind of put that into some kind of definition, perhaps, of, of worship. When I think about worship in that context, mm -hmm. I think about, you know, you asked, I think, how I would define worship. And I gave you a kind of a generic, broad answer sure. of how others might define worship. When I think about worship in my own context and how I view God and how I worship God. I think of worship as what I do that shows my devotion mm -hmm. to God. How am I expressing praise? How am I expressing humility? How am I expressing adoration? Uh, how, am I, how am I expressing deep reverence? Mm -hmm. and I remember coming into the church, I, I mentioned in my mid-20s, and, and just being awed by the overwhelming presence of God that I had never experienced in any other context. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. It was like, this is the real presence of God. And I remember at the time I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day and drinking alcohol in excess and living a life in other respects, probably that we're certainly not what a person who's walking in righteousness with God should be doing. I see. And I remember just feeling that shame and feeling that I'm an awful, terrible sinner. And just that laying on the floor on my face because of the holiness mm -hmm. of God. And I think that's the response to God right. is we worship him. We worship him in praise, yeah. but we also worship him in, in humility and in reverence for how much other mm -hmm. he is. You know, the, the perfect, holy God yeah. and the fallen, sinful human that I am. It's... I, that's just, I don't know, I think it's random assemblage of thoughts. But Oh, no, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you for being willing to share some of your testimony. It's so powerful. And I hope folks out there listening, I, I hope your story is taking us back to those moments that were so seminal in our walk with God, where we came into the presence of this God who is so perfect and holy, and yet he wants to connect to us. And it, it, if what you've just described feels a lot like Isaiah when he sees the Lord high and exalted and he is, he's humbled. Woe is me. He's so humbled by the glory, the majesty, the splendor of God. And I think 
I think there should be something in us that responds in much the same way. That Isaiah passage is a picture of worship. Your personal testimony is a picture of worship. And I hope as our listeners and viewers have, have, have received what you've shared, it takes us back to those moments. Maybe it's been a while back for some of us that we, we encountered that perfect, pure, holy God, and, and we saw ourselves for who we were in contrast to him. That's a powerful, powerful moment. Well, it feels a lot like what you're talking about with worship and this recognizing God is holy and recognizing I am not, and there has to be a bridging of this gap. feels like there's a parallel between this word worship and this word holiness that we're talking about this season. And so you've shared a beautiful idea about worship being our expression of devotion. Um, I guess I'm going to ask a two-part question. I know they're unrelated. I just don't want to lose them because you've, you've shared such a beautiful testimony. Worship and holiness, that I think we're, we're kind of getting a working sense of, of holiness is just all the areas in life in which we reflect the character of God and what he's done in our lives. And maybe worship is that more of that verb of we're pursuing holiness, but we are worshiping God. Oh, there's just a lot of crossover there. I don't know if it's a matter of semantics to try to push those apart. But if you have any comments on that, we welcome it. And then you use the word praise. Do you go down the road of trying to distinguish the praise word and the worship word? Are they all wrapped up together? What does that look like in your mind? I really like the second question. Okay. Because I, I, I think we could go in great depth and detail. Sure. Not as in depth as somebody who has great facility with the original languages, mm -hmm. which I do not. Sure. So I, I don't have that solid grasp of all of the different Hebrew words that we have for worship. So I, I will take a pass on, on sure. that aspect of it. But I'd like to come back to the first part of the question first. Um, you know, you mentioned early on in the conversation this all of life is discipleship. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we have these things that we focus upon. And each individual, each leader in various churches will have specific things that they focus upon. And I like this, all of life is evangelism, mm -hmm. that we have to reach people who are not walking with God. We have to reach them because that is our, our first and foremost responsibility. That's an act of worship. That's an act of holiness. That's an act of it's our it's incumbent upon us. Um, coming back to this, all of life is worship. Sure. And all of life is I think all of life is holiness. Right. And and we just everything that we do, we have to look through that lens mm -hmm. of is this holy? Mm -hmm. Is this doing what God wants me to be doing? I think sometimes we look at holiness through two through too narrow a lens. And we look at, well, what do I need to do? <laughs> I'm just going to make a list of yeah. all of the things that I know I'm supposed to do to keep holy. Holiness as a code. And, and God told his people, these are the things you need to do. He told them what they could eat. He told them what they couldn't eat. He told them how they were supposed to sacrifice, right. what they were supposed to give, how they were supposed to give it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think about Jesus. He, he was asked the question, what's the greatest commandment? And he said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all thy soul, right. with all thy might, and love your neighbor. And I see those as part of being holy. Right. And so when we talk about holiness and all of life, being about holiness. I, I, that wasn't really your question, but as, as I've been thinking about this question of worship, what does worship have to do with holiness, mm -hmm. and how do we define holiness? Right. Um, you'd ask, how do I define worship? But I, I also think about how I'm defining holiness, and what does it mean to be holy, to try to emulate what God wants us to be, and to live the lives mm -hmm. that we can and honor and respect to him and the relationship we have with him. So I, kind of my, all over the map here. Well, and it's an organic, 
you want to ask a follow-up question on that before we go to the second question? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to add a comment because I appreciate what you're doing. This has been an interesting journey with this season of the podcast because, uh, again, holiness is a biblical value. It's not some kind of apostolic, we have a corner on the market, so we get that. But it it really isn't just this one little thing that's in a box. It, it, it's this bigger thing. So I think you, what you're saying is tying into where we're going with this entire conversation all season long. And just a fresh look at holiness, understanding it's every part of our lives, as you've well said. Um, so I just, I appreciate what you're doing. Again, I don't want to get hung up on semantics, but I think you're at least helping me when I've sometimes said to someone, well, why do you do this? Well, of course I've got a biblical, you know, principle and I, it is an act of worship. I always try to include that in. I reference that at the beginning of the conversation because I, I've, I started saying that because I think I wanted to convey this concept that I love God. I recognize his word invites me to be like him and draw close to him. And so what I'm trying to express in that moment when I tell someone I'm doing this as an act of worship, I'm trying to make that point that I'm doing this because I want to express my devotion to him. So mm -hmm. you've at least helped me think through a little more why I give that answer. And, and it's helped me realize they are connected. Uh, and I see that in, in holiness. Uh, and I, I, don't, I wouldn't want anything that we say to, to negate or, or to take away from the things that as one as apostolics, we have a very distinct set of things that make us holy. Mm -hmm. And I believe in all of those things. Sure. I mean, and holiness is. Um, Um, I don't know. I, I wanted to get that in because I, I really, I, I believe in the fundamental truths of what we traditionally hold. Yes. Um, and you talk about these in your book. I, I won't, I won't get into that at this time, but <laughs> All the, right. um, in any event, that's. No. Okay. Well, I appreciate the conversation. I, I think we're the more we talk, the more of this is crystallizing in my mind. And um, I, I just want to kind of keep plowing in the same vein. I'll throw in one more word because I'm layering this with all these words that I think we talk about in church settings. And I think by length of time you're in apostolic environments, we kind of just begin to assimilate these words and, and we figure out the connotations. I think we have these, you know, just kind of assumptions about what these words are, but you know, how often do we have a conversation like this? We really try to parse it. So let me throw one more word in the mix and then you can comment wherever you'd like. Let's throw the word sacrifice in. We're already talking about worship, we reference praise, we reference holiness, discipleship. And then there's that word sacrifice. When we start talking about worship and praise in the Bible, sacrifice comes up as well. Throw that word in on top, comment however you like. Yeah, sacrifice is, is an important part of being a child of God. Um, we, we do learn things that we need to sacrifice. I think fasting comes to my mind when we take a period of time and we go without food. Mm -hmm. um, it can be really hard yeah. to say, I'm. this is what I'm going to do, but I'm doing this in devotion to God. Right. And it's a practice with a long history. And, you know, it's not that we do this to earn God's favor. Right. It's not that we're trying to convince God to do something for us, but but it's an act of getting closer to God. So we sacrifice something. We we say, I'm going to take this period of time and, and sacrifice. I think about also in, in giving. You know, when we are taking some portion of our finances, some, taking some aspect that uh, goes above and beyond um, our ties, which is kind of a mandatory minimum, if you will. Sure, uh, sure. For some coming into the church uh, new, that could be a sacrifice. That a person would view that as a sacrifice. But, but then above and beyond, what am I offering to prove that I'm committed to this? walk with God. I, I want to 
I want to say I'm putting God first. I'm doing it um, in my relationship with him and what I'm consuming and, and what I'm doing with my finances. Yeah. All right. I'm going to throw one more word in the conversation. <laughs> I keep complicating it, but it's just bringing up so many, so many ideas. And these are all interconnected, interwoven. Let me then add the word moderation because I could, you know, you use the example of financial sacrifice. Well, I could sell my house and live in my car and give all that money for the gospel to be advanced. It would be a sacrifice, yes. Is it necessarily a sacrifice God is calling me to? Well, I, I, I hope not. Uh, so there's this call to worship sacrificially. There's also moderation, which can mean a lot of things. We've talked about discipleship, we've talked about holiness, we've talked about worship, we've talked about sacrifice. Now add the moderation layer to the conversation. Yeah, moderation is, is a hard thing to define because for one person, moderation can mean one thing, and for another, mm -hmm. it could mean something entirely different. And so taking all things into account, knowing that God is faithful, that God rewards a cheerful giver, and yet saying, I'm going to give everything that I own. I'm going to give everything that I have. Um, my wife and I both quit our jobs to go on an AIM trip. And we left um, in 2009, which was right after the big crash of 2008. Mm. Uh, and when we came back from our four month mission term, we couldn't get jobs for, it was I think 14 months. Oh, wow. That we were both, without regular income. Uh, it was easy to go. Mm. It was hard to come back because that there was that element of sacrifice. And there was that really lack of moderation. We just followed the call of God and said, this is what God has called us to do. And going was easy. Mm. Coming back was not as easy after four or five, six months of being unemployed had gone by and we were, we were racking up credit card bills, trying to meet our expenses. So, uh, you know, if I had it to do over again, would I do anything differently? No. God called us. We followed the call. God provided. Um, after 14 months, we both ended up both employed, but it was that time of testing, that time of trial. So I'm not sure if, how that plays into moderation. Maybe it's an example of a kind of anti-moderation. Sure, but. sure. Well, and, and that's one of those, this is one of those conversations where, again, we have all of these words. How do they all connect? And there might not be the perfect Venn diagram or flow chart that put them all together. I just, as, as this conversation deepens, I think of more aspects. And you're right, in some ways that's a different thing. So the value of moderation, of course, we use the word modesty sometimes when we're talking about holiness. And this is a season on holiness. So moderation is connected to modesty. And I don't think that the idea of sacrifice and moderation are at odds. I think there are areas in our lives where, where maybe sacrifice applies in a personal sense in what we are giving. Maybe moderation is, is in what we're consuming. I don't know if it's more about giving and consuming. Uh, they're, they're both related values. And I, I, I really didn't have a certain direction to go there. I just, I think this season, for those of you listening, when you think about your life, maybe part of this is, is just kind of getting all the words out on the table. What are all these different ways in which we talk about holiness? Well, some of it is, is about worship. We do things as worship, and that connects to this whole conversation, holiness. We, we make some sacrifices, and that's sometimes over and beyond whatever the biblical prescription is. So you're not going to turn to chapter and verse that gave you the exact specifics of what country to go to and how long to go and all that. But clearly, in following after the will of God, you felt that sacrifice was in order in your, for your family. I think moderation um, is a related word. And what I'd like to really challenge our listeners, our viewers today, is on each of these different layers that we're adding to the conversation, I'd like to challenge you to think about, is there a certain word that's going to resonate with you and say, well, you know, I, I can look at my life and I do see this pattern of sacrifice, but maybe I know in these other areas of my life, maybe I have some excesses where maybe God's calling me to moderation. 
And you're right, in some ways they're almost opposite. I've known people who who are just very sacrificial in one area, but then I look at this other area of their life and I see what to me, and we're careful not to compare, but it feels like an excess. So yeah, there there is some connection. I'm not completely clear on even still on we live a sacrificial life and yet we live in moderation. I, I think it's an excellent question because, you know, can can you pray enough? Hmm. That's a tough question, right? Can you fast enough? Mm -hmm. Is there is there enough yeah. prayer that you can do? And where is that? Okay, I, I, I've prayed enough today. <laughs> and what is that am amount? Yeah, you know, yeah. in, you, you want that relationship with God, that everyday mm -hmm. devotion, that constant seeking. We, we have. Uh, there are some Bible reading plans where we're going to read the Bible through in 90 days. Mm -hmm. I, that's that's a lot of Bible reading. Yeah. And it's for those that undertake that, I think that's wonderful. Absolutely. Um, I, ha I haven't read the Bible through in 90 days, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't know where that line of mm -hmm. moderation is. How, mu how much time, you know, and we measure, we like to measure things. Mm -hmm. We like to quantify things. Right. And so that question of moderation is, is can can you give too much? Mm -hmm. Can you, uh, there is that sense of you know, how much is enough? And then it gets back to our, the fundamental question of, I'm going to check the boxes. Yeah. Okay. And so if your relationship with God is simply checking the mm -hmm. box, then maybe go back to the drawing board and say, I, I'm going to mm -hmm. focus on prioritizing my relationship with God, what does that look like? So very good. Very good. I, I And I'm hoping that this podcast does that. I'm hoping this podcast is a chance for everyone out there to take a fresh look at their at their spiritual health. You know, if, if scripture gave us maybe a checklist, like we are talking about, sometimes we, we've noticed this tendency, we want the list. Give me the bullet points. If I can turn to X book of the Bible and X chapter and I can get that list, it makes it easy. But it really feels as though scripture is more of an invitation and it's, it's less about a list and it's more about an invitation, but that does put the responsibility on us to navigate that. I appreciate what you've shared today to put this journey to follow Jesus Christ in the in the perspective of worship. It really is a beautiful journey to grow close to him and express our devotion to him. Yeah. Well, we want to start moving toward an end of the conversation as much as we've enjoyed it. And I really wanted to maybe um, take advantage of the fact that you are the book editor for Pentecostal Resources Group and see if you might share with us some resources that you think are helpful. We've covered a lot of topics, so you should probably have plenty of directions you could go from here. But as our listeners and viewers think about uh, some of these words that may have triggered, again, like I said, an introspection that maybe they would say, oh, I should probably think more about that area. Maybe you could share some resources that may help in that in that journey. I think Brother Bernard's books uh, are, would be the first resource I would recommend to anyone. In Search right. of Holiness and Practical Holiness, two of the volumes in his theology series mm -hmm. um, are kind of a starting point for right. anyone who wants to know more about holiness. Um, there's a third book, and it was part of a small group series that PPH produced called Pursuing Holiness by David Bernard. And so that um, is kind of the best of, um, the greatest hits from, sure. from his two books um, that are longer books. Um, Jim Littles wrote a book um, a few years back called More Like Him, um, Personal Spiritual Disciplines, that um, I highly recommend. It's, uh, it's a great, great book that's helpful in, in, I think, many of these parts of this conversation. And then, the book that you have, that you have written just coming out this year on helping children right. because I belong to Jesus, uh, a book that will help guide teachers, parents especially, um, in conversations with their children or their class about you know how to how to teach holiness to the five to eleven year olds. Just really zeroes in on some of the basic things that five to 11 year olds can understand about holiness. So 
give a plug for your book coming out this fall. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I'm really hoping that that book, and who knows, maybe it, it, it goes on. I'm hoping it can it can help with some of these ideas we've talked about today. Again, it's going to be a simpler conversation for a child, but I'm not so sure there aren't some of us older adults who could benefit from a very simple walk back through some of these principles like we've discussed here today that help us in this journey to be like him. So I, I appreciate you sharing those resources with us. Thank you for all that you've shared and your time here today. I hope to our listeners and viewers, you have been blessed as we've explored this idea of following Jesus more closely. We really believe that as discipleship, as our goal, as our process, as we commit to that, we're naturally going to grow close to Jesus Christ and live the life and reflect who he is transforming us to be. So thank you for taking part in this conversation. And we look forward to joining you again very soon in the next episode of The Holiness Podcast.